Hello everybody, it's Tuna. So yesterday we had the Crucible announcement lead stream and I just wanted to kind of go over some of the news and talk about my thoughts, what I think of the league, what I think is going to be good in the league, what I think is going to be bad in the league and essentially sort of go through the changes and um, so we can gather so, sort of a better understanding of um, what we're looking at here. And um, the TLDR for me is that the league mechanic looks pretty good. It looks like a standard sort of circle league press a button or monster spawn so that's always fun for mappers uh on the power side of things and on the item side of things that's where things look start to look very interesting actually because it seems to me like path of exile in general is sort of mo moving more towards leagues that give uh, a substantial amount of power so a big amount of power creep although they are not essentially sort of making that power creep go to core so they are tackling power creep in a way of um for example, you know, in other video games where they have done this as well is uh, like World of Warcraft, where you get borrowed power. In those games, however, borrowed power uh, is actually quite bad in the long run because what happens is that you go from, um, you know, at the end of an expansion and then you go into the next expansion and you lose all that borrowed power and you essentially just feel terrible. Uh, but in Path of Exile, that essentially resets every three months and we are completely accustomed to going from literal gods to, you know, washed up beach psychos so essentially um it's not quite as bad in path of exile and i think it's actually a good way to tackle board power and to give us really fun things to play around with in the league as long as people don't get too accustomed to essentially using those things uh, for example it would be like harvest or something like that right um so this board power is in the form of skill trees within your weapons and what you do is you it, um you go and you interact with the league mechanic, you click a button and it charges XP within your weapon. And as the XP charges, you unlock more nodes in your weapon, as you can see here. And these nodes in some cases are absolutely insane. Some things to note are, for example, like this node, 6% uh, increased strength and intelligence. That's completely absurd for Omni builds. So you'll essentially be getting a bow with, uh, you know, additional Omni essence. And that's just crazy, right? Um, you obviously have like other things like, uh, minions overwhelm you know that kind of stuff accuracy more vanilla nodes um, like here for example base physical damage although the downside being you convert although that could also be seen as an upside it depends on the build right of course and some of these do have downsides as you'll see here like reduced attack speed that is local attack speed on your thicket bow meaning you'll be losing quite a substantial amount of damage if you get that although you do get base critical strike chance so because of that you're actually able to um, modify your weapon and also gain global modifiers as well on top of that uh, in the form of stuff like this, increased endurance charge, for example, or um, increased explicit speed modifier magnitudes. So this is actually local as well on the weapon. So if you were to actually get attack speed on your weapon, you get 15% increased um, effect of that, essentially. Some other crazy things that you do get are Master Fletcher. So this is a passive skill node. Um, that they added this league as well. Um, they have done sweeping changes to the uh, uh, to the passive skill tree, and um, adding this one uh, was one of them. This gives you one additional projectile uh, for your bow attacks, and it replaces um, what used to be attack damage uh, with bows and damage over time and accuracy. Um, from my understanding, is is if you have a node allocated on. Um, the skill tree of the weapon itself it's like anoints so essentially it does allocate it on this passive skill tree as well so you cannot get uh for example uh double benefits of this node if you were to actually have it in your weapon and on your skill tree which is in a way um i think kind of sucks but uh it's sort of i guess a way to keep it in check and to not make it go too crazy uh other uh things that you can have is like Additional effect of auras, although it gives you increased reservation efficiency. So, sorry, um, increased reservation. Uh, and then you have uh, additionally um, extra links. So, you have extra links as well, which we don't know quite yet what the links are. We don't have a list of all of the modifiers that we're going to get in our weapons, but I suspect that it's going to either be data mined or it's going to be something that we'll get um, as the league is launched. Um, you know, we'll discover all of these things as we level our weapons. So, yeah. One thing to note is that you need to, um, 
first to find out about what's on your weapon, like to, to, to see what your skill tree is, you need to put it on your crucible and you need to level it up. Meaning um, you cannot just filter these weapons out to see, uh, you know, to find out the good nodes and stuff. So essentially it's going to be a huge gamble to be able to find a really, really good skill tree. Um, I, f I suspect that there's going to be people with really advanced searches um, that are going to scour the passive, uh, the, the trade website to figure out, you know, um, all of the good combinations that people are going to want to buy. And they're going to essentially flip them. <laughs> so there's going to be probably a lot of videos explaining what's good and what's bad to come. But um, this is just a quick rundown, so we'll keep it simple. Some really standout ones, though, are, for example, here. So what I thought was really cool is you gain a soul leader for 20 seconds uh, on killing a rare or unique enemy with dual strike or double strike. Um, I'm not too interested in dual strike or double strike per se, but I, I like the concept that this is a modifier to a skill gem. And I would love to see um, modifiers to every single skill gem in the game. Although that sounds like a lot of work for GGG, obviously. I am really, really hoping that they are adding modifiers to all of the skill gems um, so that, you know, you, you no matter what, if you're playing like uh, Blade Vortex, there's something for you. If you're playing Lightning Arrow or Tornado Shot, there's something for you as well. So I, I really, really look forward to that. And of course, there's other ones that are, are, are really good. Like, for example, this one, again, this is for Omni. It seems to me like uh, it's really going to be crazy uh, for Omni, this league. Um, Omniscience is, is, is crazy, honestly, this league, because of all these modifiers. So this is essentially 100, uh, plus 100 Intelligence, which is plus 100 Omni. You gain no inherent bonuses from Intelligence, but you already have that on Omni. So there's literally no downside to this. So again, that is absolutely crazy. And you have some base crit. Uh, some flat damage, and again, one of those um, skill gem modifying passives here, but for Flicker Strike. So you're able to actually use your power charges instead of Frenzy charges or <laughs> insurance charges with Flicker or Vigilant Strike. Um, so that is a way to sort of like change how the skill gem works. One big concern that I have with this uh, uh, League mechanic itself is the fact that as you can see, when you're in maps, you're actually having to click on a button and the button charges and essentially it's going to fill up the XP bar and yeah, and that's how you encounter with the League Mechanic. Although, I think this in itself is a bit of a problem because of how Path of Exile works. That means that first of all, you're going to have to clear all of the ma monsters in the vicinity of this League Mechanic. You're going to have to make sure there's nothing around. As we know, monsters patrol in PoE, so you're going to be standing there clicking that button for 10 to 15 seconds, uh, waiting for your thing to charge up. And if something approaches you, you know, you might, you might, you have this big thing on your screen. You can't really see what's going on and you know you might be getting attacked or or off screen or basically killed by something while you're trying to interact with the lead mechanic or while you're trying to actually fill up that xp bar in the crucible so that is the first and only real downside that i see for the lead mechanic um other than that it seems like everything is just fantastic uh it seems like it's something that we've been asking for for a while is a map mechanic you know people just want to have more juice in maps less uh broken sort of um, gameplay so essentially we're just going to be killing monsters and we're going to be getting a lot of power from that in the form of uh, getting your weapons up and things like that another downside that i think uh, could be actually quite detrimental to the progress and um, how it feels like to progress through the league mechanic is the fact that it's all rng um so you are a never actually certain of what you're going to be getting on your weapon and you're always going to have to be actually uh, leveling up your weapon before crafting it so this is a new requirement for bases in itself. Um, so these days we've actually been crafting a lot off of fractured bases. So imagine like, for example, you're trying to craft a plus two arrow bow, which is fractured generally. The first thing you would do is you would pick up a base and you would put it in the crucible and you would see whether it has a good uh, skill tree. And if it has a good skill tree, you're like, cool, um, I'm going to put that in my stash. If it has a bad skill tree, you just throw it away. Um, Essentially, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to obviously roll for your plus two arrows. Uh, you're going to have to add the modifiers and then you're going to have to go for the fracture. So that is a that is a gamble in itself of whether you're going to get the fracture on that weapon. And then uh, once you have the fracture, then you craft it, right? Um, and this is maybe just more of an advanced scenario of crafting. However, um, for other weapons, you know, whether it's like, uh, you know, plus level fractures and things like that, that people are finding on the floor, there might be a scenario where you, you, you pick up one of those like plus one spell wands, you pick it up and you put it in the crucible 
and it's just complete trash. Um, the skill tree just doesn't match anything that anybody would ever want with any build that's relevant to that fracture. So in itself, that has lost a lot of value. Or another way to look at it is that it hasn't gained a lot of, a lot of value. So, uh, but on the other hand, if you do have a good skill tree with that, that base itself has gained an absurd amount of value to certain people that would be willing to pay for it. Um, so that is obviously something that you're going to have to look at and um, interact with. You know, you're definitely going to have to put it into the Crucible first to figure it out. Or I suspect that there's also going to be people who are buying ones that are, um, you know, not leveled up or unrevealed so that they can gamble on the odds of finding something good. So there was obvi there's obviously going to be some added value there um, in the sense of, you know, whether people want to be actually paying more for things or not, um, depending on whether they're uh, revealed uh, and what they have actually revealed on the weapons themselves. So the next big reveal that they showed us is the new ascendancies or the reworked ascendancies of the saboteur and the pathfinder. So the saboteur has become more of um, it's less of a specific uh, ascendancy or mine and traps, and now it's also going to include trigger skills, and that is sort of facilitated by this uh, passive here, like clockwork, that gives you increased cooldown recovery rate. Uh, nearby enemies have 10% uh, reduced cooldown recovery rate, so that essentially makes it so that um, bosses are less spammy in a way, 10% less spammy. And there is also Perfect Crime. Perfect Crime is the most interesting notable that they actually gave us on here. And that essentially is, um, imagine you have two skitterbots following you around, and uh, all your triggered skills are actually triggered on them. So um, you're basically doubling the amount of skills that you're triggering, uh, although they are dealing 35% less damage. So essentially, uh, this is 30% more damage at the cost of it being triggered on your skitterbots and not on your, on your um, character. And what that looks like is something like this. You can see that he's triggering uh, his skills and they're actually being triggered on his bots and uh, he's triggering them twice as much. Essentially what that means is, yeah, 30% more damage um, to your triggered skills. And it's also uh, going to be quite interesting to be able to find out sort of interesting interactions with um, different skills that might have some fun stuff on them. Or also items that actually you can trigger. For example, they actually uh, showcased a reworked uh, Choir of the Storm, which instead of uh, level 20 Lightning Storm, it triggers level 30, which deals a substantial amount of damage. So up to, I think, 4,000 up-end damage. And... Um, yeah, all of those things are going to be triggered by your bots. So you're going to be getting 30% more damage on all those triggers. And um, that could actually be quite fun to, uh, you know, play around with. On the downside for this, um, Saboteur is actually getting some nerfs to traps. And um, to some extent also mines. Because they are locking the Pyromaniac node, which was a really good node that we actually want to have early, behind um, Chain Reaction and Demolition Specialist. So not all mines would actually want to spec into demolition uh, uh, specialist and not all traps would want to chain into chain reaction uh, spec into chain reaction especially since chain reaction has also lost the 50 percent um cooldown recovery for traps that means that yes seismic trap has got a substantial nerf this patch on top of the fact that it now has to uh, take this node it has no choice if you want to get pyromaniac and if you do actually want to play seismic trap might have to spec into like clockwork and you think to yourself well then it's only a 20 percent cooldown recovery uh, nerf right uh, it is but you're also losing an ascendancy passive so not only are you losing 20 percent cooldown recovery but you're pretty much only like losing pyromaniac right or born in the shadows or whatever right so you're gonna have to be picking between those nodes now um to yeah to to, to fill out your uh, ascendancy and the sad part is that there is this notable here, um, Bomb Specialist, which um, you deal 20% 20 uh, chance to deal 50% more area damage. And 20% chance to take 50% less area damage from hits, which is actually a really, really good node. Although, not all trap skills are area. area like, they're, they're not all um, dealing area damage. Uh, and not all mind skills are dealing area damage. So essentially, that is just a fantastic node for many builds that you know, like, they might not be able to use that. And same with Chain Reaction. Skills used by traps have 50% increased area of effect. What about all the, the non-area traps? Essentially, what it feels like is 
all the projectile traps are now just way better off being, um, you know, being dead eyes instead, or being raiders or something like that. It, it feels like, in a, in a way, um, they were trying to make this ascendancy appeal to a broader uh, spectrum of builds, but at the same time, they pushed out some of their own um, and made this build. I mean, this ascendancy not quite as good. And I think the reason for that was because they wanted to nerf seismic. But if they wanted to nerf seismic, they should have nerfed seismic. They shouldn't have nerfed saboteur. Um, because that that inherently that it hurts all trap builds, and it's not like all trap builds were amazing. It was mostly just outliers, um, and yeah, not, it, I think that's quite detrimental to all trap builds. So that is the downside with this ascendancy. But aside from that, I think it's going to be some of the most interesting um, builds that are going to come out of the perfect crime notable this league. So I'm definitely looking forward to um, seeing that and uh, seeing what I can come up with in the league with this uh, with this ascendancy. So next is the Pathfinder. The Pathfinder is actually, I think, a very, very welcome change. Something that I've been asking for or wanting for a very long time now. Which is essentially making this ascendancy less attack focused and more generic. So that more builds can actually use Pathfinder um, and not have to be necessarily, uh, you know, attack builds or um, poison builds. So not only did they make it more generic for elemental attack builds, but also for poison builds. Um, it's really nice to see that they changed nature's repraisal to now be more generic. So it now grants 25% chance to inflict withered for two seconds on hit and 50% increased effect of withered, which that in itself is already a substantial amount of damage. And also the fact that you are now able to actually inflict withered on hit for two seconds, be it that you actually need to um, be able to hit a lot. Uh, to sustain a high number of withered, so 25% um, effect of withered, uh, sorry, 50% effect of withered means that you essentially are getting 50% more value out of your withered debuff. And at 10 stacks, which is uh, something that I would say is actually obtainable with most builds, with 25% uh, chance to inflict it, you are gaining an extra 30% uh, increased damage taken um, to enemies, which is absolutely crazy. On top of that, it changed uh, the node from giving you um, more chaos damage with attack skills to it just being generic. So this is now actually usable by spells as well, which is really nice to see. Thank God they did not touch Master Toxicist. I think Master Toxicist is one of the coolest uh, nodes on the entire tree. Um, it's the coolest ascendancy, in my opinion. <laughs> Path of Exile, the fact that you can proliferate poisons and you have a 20% chance for those poisons to deal 100% more damage. That is just insane. Essentially, that's just 20% more damage to poisons. And um, yeah, the fact that they proliferate as well, it gives you incredible clear. You're able to proliferate onto bigger targets so that Alistair gives you funnel damage uh, when you're mapping. Um, it's very, very good for things, scenarios like, you know, Delirium or, or any scenario where there's like a lot of monsters packed together um, within the prolif radius. So also, um, you know, Expedition, uh, Blight, things like that. So this is uh, by far, I think, w the thing I'm happiest with is that they're keeping that and they're also changing the other nodes uh, to sort of uh, facilitate other builds to come in that are not necessarily attack builds. Uh, Nature's Adrenaline is just, it's kind of a, of a vanilla node. You just gain three charges every three seconds. That is obviously nice. So you're going to be getting your sustain like this. Um, they changed Master Surgeon to uh, not remove life flask effects on full life. So essentially what that does is that turns all your life flasks into enduring life flasks. Life flasks. Um, your life flasks don't queue, right? So you can't be spamming your life flask, get infinite effect of it. Although it's nice for certain things like, um, for example, I think Divination Dissolite is a, a hybrid life flask. Essentially that means that you won't have to be doing any sort of funky stuff with reserving your life. And then um, getting sort of like overleached in that way with uh, petrified blood. I think you're going to be able to get full effect of um, your divination dissolute by just using Master Surgeon and just clicking your life flask. You're going to have the uptime there. So that's really nice. So on top of that, the Master Surgeon node will also enable things like uh, Supreme Decadence, which is a um, keystone that you get through Timeless Jewels. 
Gives you life recovery rate from flask, also applies to energy shield. Although you do get 30% less life recovery rate from flasks. This can be offset, obviously, by, you know, passive nodes or whatever. But essentially what that means is that you'll be clicking your flask and you're going to be overleaching um, or sort of uh, enduring your life flask effects. And you're going to be filling your energy shield as you press that. Uh, which is an interesting way to actually gain uh, hit points. Although, <laughs> the downside obviously being that you need to be pressing your life flask. There's no instilling orbs for life flasks. So, yeah, you're going to have to be pressing that um, pretty much all the time. But I think it's going to be a great sort of sustainability tool for bosses. And it's just one of the cool things that you can do with that node. Otherwise, it's, it's, you know, it's just a nice passive to have. Although the other ones, I think, are much more interesting. So everybody is sort of raving about Pathfinder as a poison ascendancy. But I think Pathfinder's real winner here is Master Distiller. Uh, grants bonuses to non-channeling skills that are used by uh, consuming three charges from a flask of each of the following types if possible. So essentially what that does is when you attack, three flasks are going to be consumed, uh, sorry, three charges are going to be consumed from your diamond flask and it's going to give you 150% increased critical strike chance. Three uh, charges are going to be consumed from your bismuth flask. It's going to penetrate 20% elemental resistance. And uh, three charges are going to be consumed from your amethyst flask. And they're going to uh, sort of deal 25% of physical damage as extra chaos damage. So these two together, uh, the first two are just absolutely insane for any sort of elemental crit build. Um, be it if you can offset the downside of it consuming charges. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet if... Um, this Master Alchemist node has a 50% chance to not consume charges. Although, from uh, the wording itself, I would assume it does, since it does specifically say you use by consuming three charges. And here it says chance to not consume charges, right? So, reading the wording itself kind of tells me that this is actually going to be working with this. So, this is going to be a 50% chance to not consume it. Essentially, what this node says is that you're consuming 1.5 charges uh, every time uh, to grant these bonuses. And those bonuses are just absolutely insane. So, obviously, you're going to be having a diamond flask. And it's going to have a crit suffix on it. That is already giving you uh, almost like 200 crit uh, or about, I think, 220 crit. But anyways, and then you're going to be gaining 150 on top of that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's a crazy amount of critical strike chance that you get from um, this in itself. You know, that is also um, keeping in mind that you have all the um, all the flask effect nodes as well leading up to these. And then if you do use something like a white zoke, for example, that already has penetration on the flask itself and less damage taken, um, penetrate 20% elemental resistances when you consume a charge from it. So... Yeah, I mean, I think this node is just crazy. And this is generic, so it's not like a penetrate, a tax penetrate or whatever, or um, a tax deal increased damage. So this, what this means is that you'll be able to use the Pathfinder Ascendancy for spells, uh, and you'll be able to get maximum effect out of all of these nodes. All of these nodes are just great for all kinds of builds. And I think this is really... A nice change to see. I, I am really, really happy to see these changes to Pathfinder. And I think I'm honestly very tempted to actually make spelled Pathfinder builds again because of this. Um, yeah, so I think kudos. I really enjoy this ascendancy. It's one of the highlights so far of the patch. And something I really look forward to um, in uh, 3.21 for sure. So among some of the chasers, they also showed some new Val skills. And these could be uh, really cool. You know, for example, like Lightning Arrow, what, what happens with Lightning Arrow is you shoot your arrow and then a bunch of them sort of zip around uh, as if it was like, you know, imagine like a spark within an enclosed arena. And they're going to be able to hit multiple times, um, you know, like a target multiple times. So essentially, it's shotguns. And you think to yourself, what is the biggest issue of Lightning Arrow? And the issue is it has bad single target, right? But if this actually solves the single target... I think Lightning Arrow can become a, a contender for, you know, for both skills in, uh, in, 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 in game where, you know, originally only pretty much Tornado Shot would be there. Um, and we also have Ice Shot, which we have not yet seen, actually. 
Uh, we've only really seen this picture here, but I assume it's also going to be like some sort of single target shotgunning as it's sort of showcased as, you know, um, something like that. So it says, I shot creates uh, IC arrows and creates multiple mirages. The character also fire at the same target. Uh, the mirages persist for, uh, persist for a few seconds firing again whenever you use ice shot. So essentially, you're going to be standing there and your mirage is going to stay there and you're going to shoot the single target and hopefully that is going to sort of fix your single target issues that you have with either of those skills. And it's nice to see them actually tackle that issue um, as, you know, tornado shot is the only ability that everybody's using and this is hopefully going to be giving people more flexibility on what to choose between uh, both skills. And of course, they also gave arctic armor, which... What happens is you encase yourself inside of ice and you take extremely uh, little damage. Basically, you're going to be taking like almost no damage when you're enclosed, but you cannot move. So that's kind of cool. And then you have Reap, which uh, creates like a scythe and then leaves some stuff on the floor. And then you have Absolution that also makes your Absolution sentries uh, do some like crazy shit. Um, so that's going to be kind of cool. And they also uh, teased Val Firestorm, calls down a bunch of meteors. That spiral inwards towards the target. Each meteor creates a patch of burning ground on the impact. So that's going to be looking pretty cool as well. And animate weapons as well. Um, the, we, uh, unfortunately, they haven't showed us any sort of videos yet for that. But I assume they're going to be sort of teasing that in, uh, in the f next few days. The animate weapon is also going to be another Val skill. So I really like um, what they're doing is adding new Val skills to all, um, all these skill gems that don't originally have them. Because it's going to sort of be a really cool button to press every once in a while when you actually need the damage. Um, you know, on bosses or on really tanky rares or whatever. That is a very nice touch. I'm very happy about that change. And I'm very much looking forward to um, the rest of the skill gems and the reveals. They also showcased some new uniques. And these uniques are, um, you know, bittersweet, I would say. Like, for example, this bow here is essentially... Um, you know, you're going to be gaining 183% increase. I suspect that's going to actually be rolled up to 200% increase bonus gain from Equip Quiver. Um, I I think on like in Path of Exile, what happens is you round it down always. So if you don't have 200% increased effect of, of Quiver, uh, you know, bonus from Quiver, it means that imagine you have plus one arrow, 100% increased effect means you get an additional arrow. But if you have 200%, you'll get an additional arrow on top of that. So you could technically have three arrows from your quiver at the expense of having no bow, which is kind of a problem considering um, bow skills scale with bows, right? So the there's a weird case where this might be good for abilities that are not essentially elemental damage attack based so skill gems that have um inherent sort of damage on the skill gem itself maybe like caustic arrow damage over time um or it's hard to even find a scenario where this would actually be good but off the top of my head um i would say maybe something like toxic rain although it doesn't have like a great uh, attack speed or potentially maybe explosive arrow but i think this is uh, honestly like i think this is kind of a bad item and um unless there's like a super niche case where this is really insane for spells or one of the skill gems i mentioned i think it's kind of bad unfortunately moving on to the helmet uh blood price uh basically it gives you reduced life and it gives you a ton of regen which the regen is obviously nice uh but it's supposed to have this kind of gimmick that uh, nearby enemies have 8% uh, less HP, essentially. So what happens is like you walk up to them and they already have 8% HP off of their bar. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a reverse calling strike. It's kind of cool, but also the downside of it being reduced life and also the helmet being terrible. The fact that you can't use uh, Eldritch influence on it and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, who's gonna like gonna run this through lab unless there's like specifically like one build that really pops off is using this helmet um nobody's gonna enchant this so it's gonna be a, sort of a pain in the ass to, to use and I, I don't really see like any crazy builds in my head at the moment that would be actually using this uh but i'd like to move on to the tainted pact 
because the things it packs is actually kind of absolutely insane. Um, so the big line on this is taking chaos damage over time heals you instead while leeching life. So um, that means that if you are leeching life, for example, if you're over leeching in scenarios where you are a um, your slayer or you're using petrified blood and you're leeching you're basically going to be healing from chaos damage you take. So imagine you are self-poisoning yourself with um, the golden rule. The golden rule basically makes all poisons you inflict reflected back to you. And if you are a poison build, those poisons deal an absolutely insane amount of damage to yourself, even if you have capped chaos res. If you don't have chaos res, even more, obviously. And as long as you're leeching, all of that is turned into healing. That healing is basically going to be that, like, you're just basically immortal unless you're taking one shots. Uh, so it, this has potential to be, like, a really, really cool, unique for builds that have, like, a decent amount of max hit damage taken. And then they just need that huge healing boost. So maybe, like, delve builds or, or like, a very tanky bossing build or some hardcore builds. But I think this is a really cool, unique design. And I, and I really enjoy it compared to the other ones. Um, there's another unique that they actually showcased. There's going to be a helmet um, that has the potential to be used in the Crucible. So you're going to be getting um, sort of a passive skill tree on that. Uh, so that's really nice as well. That's a unique that I think is potentially going to be absolutely insane, depending on the passives that you actually get on it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's very, very exciting. So uh, they actually have done a lot of changes as well in the patch notes themselves and the most uh, standout things that I could say is there's uh, a few a few nerfs to the masteries um, the most standout one is that they actually are removing 20% reservation efficiency to specific auras from clusters such as um, for example from this cluster here uh, you were able to get 20% 25% increased reservation efficiency uh, of grace you no longer have that in um, in 321 as if you, if you convert here you see that all of the masteries are changed so it, it would take too long to really go through every single one of them but the really standout ones would be for example that you're losing reservation efficiency there or um some of the cool ones would be that like the leech master you're getting 10 percent instant leech so 10 percent instant leech is actually really insane for attack builds and leech builds because you're going to be basically getting like old vault packed back and you can actually stack that to 20% if you green the, the Claw Mastery, as you can see here. Imagine you stack uh, the Claw Mastery, 10% uh, of Leech is instant uh, per equip Claw. So, I mean, if you're dual wielding <laughs> Claws, which um, is not exactly like something people have done for a while. Although it might be viable, this patch, because you do actually have bonuses to dual wielding now. Your inherent attack speed bonus from dual wielding is doubled while wielding Claws. That is another Mastery. Yeah, you can get essentially 30% of leeches instant. That is both life and mana leech. So as long as you're attacking stuff, you will literally never die. And as long as your EHP is, uh, you know, high enough to be able to tank certain hits, you will literally never die. So that is a very, very cool mastery. Another cool mastery to talk about is um, the accuracy mastery that grants 500 to accuracy rating and minus two to accuracy per level. So that means that at level 100, you'll still be getting 300 flat accuracy. Now, you might think like, oh, that's kind of whatever. But in the past, uh, Omni builds have sort of had issues with accuracy since they weren't able to take the Dexterity's accuracy bonus inherently grants 3 to accuracy per Dexterity since they didn't have any Dexterity. They had Omni, right? So this essentially is 300 uh, accuracy rating that Omni builds weren't originally getting. That is really nice, especially considering that now the bow clusters are losing a lot of their percent accuracy rating. So they're going to have to make up for that through that. And now that I'm onto it, uh, I want to talk about Master Fletcher, which is uh, bows fire an additional arrow. And also there is multi-shot here, which bows attack uh, fire an additional arrow as well. So if you are wanting to play bows, this is a good league for it because you do have these nodes here. Uh, you did lose a little bit, a little bit of damage, you know, leading up to Master Fletcher, and this does cost four passive skills. Um, but they, they're basically enabling Tornado Shot earlier in the game, and people might argue like, yeah, but we lost plus one implicit on Synth Quivers. We did lose plus one uh, implicit on Synth Quivers, 
But since they reworked the way that we actually get uh, synth implicits from synth maps, those quivers have cost basically just an incredible amount of currency, you know, upwards of 100 divines. So this is enabling tornado shot at earlier levels. So you'll be able to just get like a bow, maybe with plus one arrow um, on the bow itself, or plus two arrow, you know, if you if you have the currency for it. Um, but you might not e actually even need that at all. You can already play Tornado Shot if you just spec into those two and you just have like a high elemental damage bow. So it's nice to see that you'll, um, you know, you're, you're sort of enabling builds at a cheaper entry cost. And it, I really like that the power is shifted less on gear and more onto the passive skill tree on builds that originally were very expensive um, and had very high gear requirements, such as Tornado Shot. So I'm really happy to see that. And that pretty much is uh, just a quick little rundown of uh, the passive skill tree. Of course, there's a there's a whole skew of changes that you should check out if you want to see all the mastery changes. There's a lot there. Um, the, yeah, check that out. But this is like the sort of stuff that sort of really stood out to me that I wanted to point out and that I'm really happy about. So the final thing that I wanted to talk about is um, the new Atlas passive skill tree, which is not really new, but they have done some changes to the Atlas passive skill tree. And essentially what that is, is they've introduced gateways. Um, gateways are going to be a way to sort of, if you allocate the keystone, it's going to take you from one side of the passive tree all the way across to the other side of the passive tree. So you'll be able to do sort of strategies that are um, weren't previously possible. So you could sort of, you know, if I want to do like Abyss and Blight, Abyss was here and Blight was there. But now you can actually do that because you can transfer yourself all the way up to the other side of the Atlas passive tree. And that's really cool. So this is going to enable... Uh, mixing and matching mechanics and it's going to save you an absolute ton of points and even on like any sort of tree in general it's you're going to be able to save maybe like four to five passive skill tree points um on 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 strategies that you were previously running already so that's just the net positive for literally everybody and uh, that's a really nice change to see we have yet to see actually all the changes to the Atlas passive tree so yeah that is something that we're going to have to sort of um wait for more news until we can make a video about it or until we can talk about it but um i'm really happy about this change one thing that is to note that i'm kind of sad to see is that they have not actually um talked about the atlas passives that were previously given bonuses to bosses so for example the synth uh, the synth implicit farms that people were running um there's you know, they didn't replace that with anything uh, in, in, in the previous league. They said that like, oh, they're working on implementing those tree, uh, those passives back in, onto the tree or onto the items themselves. But we haven't actually gotten any information on that. The bossing at the moment, I think, is a little bit... Um, it's a little bit underappreciated and it's, it's a little bit sort of... I feel like GGG needs to look at bossing a little bit more and they need to look at synth maps a little bit more because they're currently not in the best state. And I wish they, you know, I wish they were improved upon in the future. So that is pretty much the rundown of patch 3.21. My thoughts and uh, what I really look forward to in the patch. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and you found something interesting. And, you know, my explanations have sort of explained something that you might not have uh, seen or, you know, I've been able to point out something, um, something new or whatever. <laughs> I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that I've, I was able to sort of shine light on some of the things that you might not have seen in the patch notes. And uh, I really look forward to 3.21. I, I, I hope that you look forward to it as well. It's going to be a great patch, although there's some doom and gloom on, disc, uh, on, on discords and on Reddit. Don't worry, like we are losing some power here and there, but this, this, these, these, these trees that we're getting on weapons, are absolutely insane. So we're going to be getting so much power from this. Um, and I, I suspect there's going to be so much cool stuff to look forward to this league. Very, very A lot of cool builds with the new ascendancies. And I, I can't wait to get back to Path of Exile and grinding and killing some monsters. And of course, an in-map mechanic, meaning I'll be able to just blast maps and have fun. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to maybe you know leave a like. And if, if you'd like to subscribe as well, I, I am looking to reboot my, uh, my YouTube channel. And um, I am really looking forward to putting out more content for this season, the seasons to come, and hopefully in the future, more ARPG content. We do have you know uh, Diablo 4 coming, and we have Torchlight Infinite, and we also have all this other cool shit coming in the future. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And 
I look forward to, uh, you know, putting out a next video and seeing you guys again. Cheers.